Hello, in this video we're going to start looking at how to get our character onto a character sheet. So as I've got an example here, I've got an inventory and I wanted to show our character inside the inventory. Um, and, you know, in the previous um, post, I think it was covered over here, um, I had a uh, mannequin design in there. So you can see uh, there was a mannequin. And now, you know, uh, I've customized my character for the game and I want to um, bring the character into our inventory, basically, right? So um, that's what we're going to do in uh, this episode. So I'll give you a quick demo. So um, when we log in, we have our character in the middle there. You can see is starting up. And uh, the character over here should fully represent the character that we have in game. So we can also make this update live. So if you have a working inventory that, you know, updates the meshes of your character, we can also update the meshes inside the inventory there as well. So uh, that's what we're going to look at building here. And let's get started. So in order to achieve this, we need to create three main things. So one of them is this character capture blueprint, which uh, has a scene capture component 2D. And then we want to create a render target to extract that texture into the uh, render target. And then we want to create a material which will then well, basically represent that texture. And then we can use that material inside our widgets as an image. So uh, these three things are what we need to create. And uh, before I dive into the scene capture, I want to talk about how uh, to get our mesh into here. So uh, one thing you could do is just create a mesh um, right here, uh, but you'll probably actually want to just inherit it instead. So uh, here you can see my parent class is this player proxy blueprint, and I, I just want to explain what that is. Um, so this is just to avoid any duplication of blueprints, right? So you can see I've got my player character blueprint over here, and this is the one that I will uh, control, possess, you know, and move around the map and stuff. Uh, so the parent class here is character. And then I've created another proxy blueprint, which basically inherits my player character blueprint. So you can see I've got all of the designs for the meshes over here. Uh, but the main thing is that I disable things like inputs and stuff, right? And then that's what I'm going to start pulling into my character texture, right? So uh, you can see my parent class here is player proxy. So I inherit all of the, my uh, mesh. So there's my character mesh. I don't need to do anything else. I, I just need to add in a component for scene capture component 2D. So I've attached it to a spring arm to make it easier to move around and stuff. And now I'm able to um, start extracting uh, the object. So if I was to update my uh, character, you know, um, and, and do some stuff with it, uh, I will inherit all of those changes here. So it, it just saves you time in the future if you do it like this. Okay, so the next thing that we'll look at is the texture target. So uh, in order to uh, set this texture target, you need to have a render target created. So in order to create that, uh, right click textures, and then there's your render target. So give it some name. So render target i'll just call it temp for now so let's save that um and inside here this should just populate so render target temp uh and there it is there right so that's how you can just uh populate it and if i open this you don't really need to change any parameters here so the the ones that you might want to change are these size ones and just um change it to whatever sort of suitable for your needs, right? So I think 256 and 256 is probably fine for my small character representation. But if you wanted, you know, just a little icon on the top left, you might want to make this something like 32 by 32. Um, as you know, like it, it still eats your performance, right? So you, you don't need it to be uh, too large. Uh, but likewise, if you do, if you do need a high definition one, then you might want to increase this to be, you know, higher, right? Um, so that's your render target um, configuration. So you can see it's over here. Uh, once you've compiled uh, your files, so your character capture blueprint, uh, this should automatically populate, okay? And once you've got this uh, render target created, you'll want to go ahead and create a material. So in order to create one, um, yeah, just, uh, just uh, click like that. And uh, the only real modification you'll need to do here is, um, uh, change this from uh, material domain surface to user interface and that's how you're going to have uh, these options available uh, so let's go back in here so all you need to do is just get your set, uh, texture sample which you get from the render ta target so texture sample uh, and that's how you get it 
um, and then just configure it like this and uh, that's how you will then have uh, the outlay of your character and that's what you can start using inside your widgets so then your widgets um, you can design it as you like so uh, for instance here we've just got a simple widget which contains the character image uh, so this is my one over here and you can see that uh, once you've added the image file so you can add one just like this right um, well I've already got one there right but uh, basically once you've added this image uh, you just need to configure the image under the brush and you can start using the material that you've created um, and it's really that simple because um, what's cool about this as well is that it will actually update live so um, essentially um, if you've instantiated this uh, blueprint in the map so you can literally just add it like this right um, it will automatically populate uh, the uh, material so basically if you have a animation on your character so on here you know I've got my character you can see it's slightly moving right so this is just an idle pose um, it will start animating inside the widget as well it's um, updated live basically so that's really cool and um, instead of just adding it directly into your map every time what I've done is um, when my player spawns so I'll, I'll again be able to go into my player um, I've added inventory management um, section and what I do is I spawn the actor for character capture blueprint I then put uh, a location so my default location is actually not 000 somewhere far away uh, so I just left it as default but you will want to change this somewhere outside the map so that the player will never see this and um, yeah just spawn this actor and the reason I've done this is because I'm going to try and change uh, the appearance of uh, the actor inside this uh, blueprint right so inside the character uh, character capture blueprint I'm going to change its appearance dynamically so I want to have this reference and I think um, there'll be some functionality here to do that so so I'll do this as part of my appearance modifier graph so uh, over here when you can see I've got my resolver all appearance I change all of the appearance for all of my different uh, mesh options and then at the end I say okay is this a proxy and if it's not a proxy so if it's my actual character and I had to update my appearance then I should get my character capture blueprint and then updates its appearance structure with that of my character uh, and that's how I can get my inventory icon uh, to be in sync with my actual character as well. So uh, yeah, uh, that's it for this one. So again, I'll just uh, finish off with a quick demo. So there we go. So there's my character, login, and you'll be able to see uh, the inventory um, is also animated right so it's spawned somewhere on coordinate 000 and um, that's how you have the representation of your character so i don't have any items that change my mesh right now and perhaps we'll uh, see this dynamically change later uh, but that's how you should be able to uh, alter this mesh as well and uh, finally um, it's worth pointing out that um, this was basically a uh, use of this video over here so basically this is uh, how I managed to get this up and running um, basically all the steps are effectively covered in here I've just applied it into my own game so I've got my own character and stuff like that um, but you know basically 90% of the work is a derivation of this one over here so it's worth uh, giving this video a lot of credit because it was pretty good okay well thanks and see you next time bye